Why sin's a big deal. Welcome to episode 23 of Anglican Catechesis, where we're learning to follow Jesus on the Anglican way. Today we'll be covering questions 105 through 108 in To Be a Christian and Anglican Catechism, the official catechism of the Anglican Church in North America. I'm Father Kurt Hein, Rector of Light of Christ Anglican Church in Georgetown, Texas, joined today by my co-catechist, Father Isaac Rayberg, Rector of All Saints Anglican Church in San Antonio, Texas. But before we dive in, let's begin with a prayer. This is the Collect for Proper 21 in the 2019 Book of Common Prayer. O merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 That's a, a great collect. It's the collect that um, we pray if there's not a if there's not a rector present, if there's not a rather a priest present to absolve sins after the confession, and uh, that's the colic that is selected, right, for the people to pray after the confession yeah. of sin. That's right. So if you have the uh, uh, the daily office app for the 2019, that's going to be kind of the default um, prayer after confession, because the assumption I think in the app is that these are lay folks just praying by themselves. Right. Um, so yeah, and that and that's a that was a a custom that arises in the 1960s um, with some revisions to the to the to the rubrics of the old 1662 when um, there just weren't as many priests available as there there had been before so mm. the lay led service became a thing and the uh, revisers of the rubrics rightly saw the the colic for trinity 21 with proper 21 in the 2019 as a as a good in lieu of absolution um, prayer Yes, I love that how it ends that we may serve you with a quiet mind. Yes, that's beautiful. We all need a quiet mind. <laughs> mm -hmm. We all and and confession is so important to getting to a quiet mind, right? All those that's voices right. within our head uh, accusing us or trying to excuse us, and um, bringing all of that to to Christ, uh, bringing that to the Father, and receiving His forgiveness is incredibly important for us to be able to put our head on the pillow at night and to just fall asleep. <laughs> and that's why it's so important that in the creed, we were reminded that um, we do believe in the forgiveness of sins. Right. And there's a lot of truths about the gospel, but central to the gospel is the forgiveness of sins. And we should not forget that. Yes. I don't think we talk about for, we talk about a lot of the other effects of the, of the gospel, but for some reason, I, Sometimes we don't talk about the forgiveness of sins as much as we ought. Um, yeah, we've become in the last few uh, decades kind of squeamish um, when it comes to talking about sin. And that's unfortunately uh, cutting off some of the uh, the effect of the gospel at the knees. Right. That's so judgmental to talk about sin. Um, and then we we also we replace it with more of a, a, a medical or therapeutic sort of understanding therapeutic, yeah. of, uh, of our failures as humans. But there is real importance to having this category of sin, and I think we'll see why as we go through this, this catechism here. So, so question number 105 is, what are sins? Sins are intentions, acts, or failures to act that arise out of my corrupted human nature and fall short of conformity to God's revealed will. Okay. Yeah, and the, the the word sin comes from an archery term to meaning to miss the mark. Um, you're not you're not hitting what you're supposed to hit. Right. So there's this understanding that as humans we have a telos, which is this understanding of a goal. Right. We have a purpose, and we are made for a certain purpose as as humans, which is well, think about the great the great commandment: love God with all your heart, soul, and mind; love your neighbor as yourself. And that's the mark which we're supposed to hit. That's what we've been created to do. And um, when we get off that mark in our life, in some way, that is sin. And there are various ways that um, that can happen. And it starts here in the heart. Jesus, of course, reveals this in the Sermon on the Mount, that, that, um, that sin is, is starts at the, at the heart level with intentions. Yeah, that's right. And then it manifests itself outside, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, so we have to understand that the sin it begins there. 
right? Whoever famously, Jesus says, whoever looks at a woman with the intention to lust after her has committed adultery in his heart already. Now, it's not the same as the actual, the physical act of adultery, which is a, a greater sin, but it still mm -hmm. has that very nature of sin because that intention has arisen um, in the heart to to do this act within the heart. And just because you're not acting it out, just because it's in the mind, um, does not make it um, not sin. That's so, right. Yeah, so, so out of that heart then comes the act. And then, uh, but are we left off the hook if we just don't do something that we know we ought to do? No. Nope, nope. There's our, there's also sins of omission. There are things we ought to do, and if we neglect to do them, we have sinned in just the same same way. Um, you know, the 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 Lord has a parable of where He talks about the two sons um, who are told to go work in the garden or work work in the fields rather, and the one says, um, "I won't do it," and then he goes and does it. The mm -hmm. other one says, I will do it, and he doesn't do it. You know, which mm -hmm. one sinned against his father? <laughs> right. Yeah, sins even, of commission. Even if the first one, yeah. And sins of omission. That's right. So doing what we ought not do and not doing what we ought to do. And in fact, many, many, maybe most sins are of this category. I mean, I remember, uh, was it was a sociology course or a medical course I was taking. It was about abuse. It was, of course, very sad. Um, but most, the, the number one type of abuse is neglect neglect yeah is neglect yeah. right it's not actually like beating somebody but it's not loving somebody as as you have a responsibility to love them it's very common with children and with um the elderly that the the number one uh way that they are abused is through neglect it's not someone not taking the responsibility that god has given them and um and not loving so missing the mark in that way um and then, so where do where do, where do all the these sins come from? Oh, well, it comes from our corrupted human nature. Mm. Um, you know, we uh, uh, when our first parents fall, um, our human nature was corrupted. We we've talked about that before. Um, it's been damaged, and uh, part of that damage is is sin. And so, the question of um, do we sin because we're sinners or are we sinners because we're sin? Well, the answer is both are true. <laughs> right. We, 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 we sin <laughs> and we are, we are sinners and it's, it's, it's cyclical. I mean, it goes both yeah. ways. Yeah. We received um, this corruption from our, from Adam. And um, that doesn't excuse anything. It's just, it's part of the reality of, of us being born as Paul says, as children of wrath, right? There is some, some sense in which we are, we we're um, we're broken and and we're wounded mm -hmm. because of this first sin, and we act out of that, and uh, and so um, we shouldn't expect that everything that comes out of our heart, all of our desires, are good. You, know, you hear this a lot, you know, just listen to your heart or follow your heart. Um, you know, deep down, uh, we are good because God created us and sustains us, and God only creates and sustains what is good. Um, but that goodness has been corrupted by sin. So there's no part of us that has not been corrupted. And so when those desires come up, which are fundamentally good, they become twisted and they get twisted into wrong again, right? They, they, they get twisted off the mark <laughs> towards That's wrong right. things. And so just because, you know, we feel a certain way or want to do something and it seems natural to us does not in any way mean that that thing is good and not sin that's right that's right so and this is something that we really need to clarify today because there's all kinds of you know i don't you know disney uh, did not do any do us any services um by <laughs> teaching this to us but there's a lot of times when what seems to be naturally right to us is actually not right and i, right. I love what um it says here that we need to be judging it by the revealed will will of god right we need to be judging our actions by that um are they conforming with, with what God has revealed to be good for us, which is his will? So number 106, how does God respond to human sin? All sin is opposed to the righteousness of God and is therefore subject to God's holy condemnation. Yet God in his mercy offers me forgiveness and salvation from sin through his son, Jesus Christ, the only Savior. 
Yeah. And both of these things are so important um, to understand, you know, don't, we can't minimize um, the sinfulness of sin. We, yeah. we can't pretend that it's not sinful and we, we can't pretend that it doesn't deserve God's holy condemnation. And as sinners, we do deserve God's holy condemnation because if he were not holy and he were not just to punish sin, then how would how would he be? I mean, how would he be holy? How would he be just? You know, a, a good person doesn't let bad things keep happening. Yes, yes. Sin, sin is opposed to love, right? That's it's right. opposed to God. So God can have nothing to do um, with sin because sin is by its it, it is destructive by its very nature. It is destructive. It's destructive force. Um, and but, that's why it's it important to note. And it's that's. Why it's important to note that God's commandments are not arbitrary. He doesn't no. flip a coin on "Thou shalt not bear false witness." No, they 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 flow out of His nature, but out of who He is, out of how He's created the world to to to, to conform to Himself. Yes, you know, out of reality. So you know, bearing false witness wasn't an arbitrary uh, uh, coin flip on God's part. But no, it's because to 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 bear witness to falsehood. Or to fail to bear witness to the truth is fundamentally opposed to the goodness of God and the goodness that He wants for us. Right, right. The moral law is as real as the law of laws of physics. Right? That's right. Gravity exists objectively apart from my desire to fly. If I jump off of a building and I believe I can fly, um, it doesn't really matter. Like I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall right, on right. the pavement. Moral law is the same thing. God created the world in a certain way. And if we don't live in harmony with that way that God has created the world, then it will break us and break, begin to break those around us. And um, I had a Hebrew professor who said, we don't break the law of God. We break ourselves against the law of God. Mm. And I think that that's... Wow, kind of picturing it like, uh, like, like, like rocks in the ocean and the, and the boat breaking against it. That's, that's a cool image. Exactly. We got to get ourselves in line with the way that the world, that God made the world. And um, we've, we've lost that understanding, but the ancients um, had that understanding. Like even when they were wrong about how the world was created and, and made, they were, they were trying to live, you know, you hear, you hear this idea of the Tao um, in the East, right? They were it's trying to observe nature and being like, how can I live in conformity with the way things are? Mm -hmm. But now uh, modern technological man we're just trying to like bend the world towards our desire so that we don't have to live in harmony with the world and i mean that's that's part of the reason why um we live in in ugly suburban um, neighborhoods <laughs> you know that that modern architecture is super ugly uh that we're depressed all the time because we're not in green spaces there's all kinds of things we're, we're eating most of our food out of like aluminum bags <laughs> there's a lot of issues that that we have as humans that that keep us from flourishing because we're viewing the world as something to manipulate for our pleasure instead and of i believe really respecting it and i, I believe c.s lewis i think it was in the screw tape letters he kind of alludes to this and he um he basically likens it to witchcraft that mm. the you know the same the same impulse that makes um, the, the the pagan magician want to twist reality to meet his wants and his and his his desires is the same thing the technological man does um, in trying to twist the world to to his wants and desires. Right, and and I I think I love technology. I think there's a but we really need to think about how we use it, right? And yeah, it's not neutral. It's not neutral. No, and what values we we are embracing that lead to the development of technologies, right. right? What what kind of cultural values are being embodied in the technologies that we create? Um, that's that's a really really it's been important, obviously, ever since we unlocked the power of the uh, the atom. Um, but it continues to be a very very real and important thing, and 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 this is why um, philosophy, this is why um, religion. Um, this is this is why specifically Christ and his revelation is incredibly important, <laughs> right? Because if we don't have a guiding light in all of this, we are for sure going to obliterate ourselves. 
uh, we we need divine intervention um, for sure. Um, and so God in his mercy does offer forgiveness yes. and salvation from sin um, through Jesus Christ. And, yes. you know, on the, on the one hand, we need to point out the exclusivity of that. You know, God has made a way. Don't mm. try to make your own way. You know, he's right. given you the way. So just do what he, he's given you um, because that's the only way it's going to work. Yeah. And and on, on, on the other on the other hand, we we should we should also emphasize that part of that forgiveness and salvation does come. Uh, one of the side benefits is, is changing us, so that we won't continue to break ourselves against the law through our sins. Right. Uh, it's, we, it, we, God we do accepts, get better. Exactly. God accepts us as we are, but um, if if He's love and He is, He's not going to leave us that way. That's um, right. Dietrich Bonhoeffer says that um, the problem is that we want to justify sin right but god only justifies the sinner <laughs> mm, mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. he never justifies sin god can't justify sin he hates right. it but he does justify he does forgive he does release from the power um, and the guilt and the shame of sin the sinner because he created the sinner right and um, the sinner is condemned only insofar as he resolutely and firmly clutches his sin and makes it his own. You know, if he's not willing to let go of that sin so that God can take it, release him from it, then he's going to um, suffer the consequences of that um, because, because this, this sin in itself is destructive. Our human so, nature has been corrupted to make us into sinners, but God in his mercy heals that corruption. He fixes that amen. and makes us into saints. And, and the word forgiveness, I don't know if it will talk about this here, but it literally means to release. Mm -hmm. It means to release. Um, so God God can release us um, from our sin, from the guilt and the shame, as, as he says in the Psalms, as far as the east is from the west. As, far, as, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so is his love for his children. So uh, question 107, how does God forgive your sins? By virtue of Christ's atoning sacrifice, in which I put my trust, God sets aside my sins, accepts me, and adopts me as his child and heir in Jesus Christ. Loving me as his child, he forgives my sins whenever I turn to him in repentance and in faith. Hmm. So yeah, the, the, the concept of atonement is, is, is absolutely huge. Um, you know, in, in the Old Testament, the, uh, the word... Um, relates to covering yes. to, to covering to covering it over um and uh we, we see that as a way of reconciling us to to god you know atonement always has that connotation of reconciliation hmm. um and then we we trust in 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 god to do that um that's that's where faith comes in faith and trust are, are synonyms in this in this respect um, so we we trust in in Jesus sacrifice and that's that's how his atoning sacrifice is applied to us and therefore then God does set aside the sins accepts me adopts me as his child that reconciliation has happened yes yes the open hand the former talked about faith as an open hand um, and the last words of Martin Luther were um, we are all beggars and that's mm. that sense of like faith that trust right is this is this hand that opens up right we give we give what do we give christ we give we give him our sin and then he <laughs> places in our hands his his love his adoption as children his uh, his forgiveness and we can take and that so, to the bank <laughs> yeah once again we see that sweet exchange mm -hmm. and, and then he continues to forgive us our sins because we do continue to sin i mean that's that's the other reality um whenever we turn to him in repentance and faith he does he does forgive us of our sins and, and um, you know, what, what is repentance? We've talked about this before. Um, you know, the Old, the Old Testament uh, word refers to turning around. You were going the wrong way. Now you're going to go turn around and go the right way. Um, the New Testament term is, uh, uh, has a connotation of rethinking. You were right. thinking the wrong thoughts, and now you're, now you're thinking the, 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 the right thought. You've changed your mind. So you change your mind. You change your direction, and you do so in faith. Right. The trust right. of God. Now, again, to quote Martin Luther in, in his 95 theses, one of the theses he says, it might be the first one, 
that the life of the Christian is one of daily repentance. Um, and so and that's why in our own liturgical uh, tradition, we do have confession and absolution in every single service. If you're doing your daily offices, um, your morning and evening prayer, um, you're going to be getting that at least twice a day. If you're uh, having a full uh, Sunday, the way the prayer book envisions it, you might be getting it three times a day. Uh, mm. That's a good thing. It is. It's it's really important. And you think about the metaphor of light. If we walk in the light, Apostle John says, as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Um, you know, light reveals, both reveals our sin and, and, and is able to cleanse um, us of our sin. I think of all the actual modern applications of light, where light is often used pass through water, for example, to to kill the microbes in it, to make it drinkable. Mm. Um, so there's this dual action of light. And so I think as we get closer, practically speaking, as we get closer to the Lord, not only do we become more sensitive to our sin, so there's always there's always sin to confess. You know, it may not be the same sort of sin, but um, we should never be in a place where we're like, you know, I, I don't think I really sinned this week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Or this this day, I mean, the closer we are to God, the more sensitive we'll be because we're more in the light, but also the more filled with light and joy we'll be uh, because we're we know that we're cleansed. And, and that kind of brings us to the last of our our questions here. 108. How should you respond to God's forgiveness? Trusting in God's continual forgiveness, I should live in continual thanks, praise and obedience to him. And as I have been loved and forgiven by God. So I should love and forgive those who sin against me. Mm. And so again, we see kind of a twofold approach here, uh, the way we live towards God, the way we live towards each other, um, and the way we live towards God flows out into the way we live towards each other. Um, yeah, the Christian walk is one of, of thanksgiving, praise, obedience, repentance. I mean, that's what it means to live as a Christian. Right. Um, and because we have been forgiven and we need to forgive others, you know, we, we, we don't act like in the parable of the, um, uh, the, the parable where you have the, the, the man forgiven of an incredible uh, debt goes out and then takes his, his, uh, neighbor by the throat who owes him a couple of dollars. Right. And throws him into prison. We don't do that. Right. And, uh, and also forgiveness is not something that is possible to earn. Right. It is, right. it must be a gift. And, and sometimes I hear people say, you know, I've done something so bad, I don't know if I can be forgiven. You know, I don't know if I can do enough to be forgiven because of the thing. Well, no, I mean, for, forgive, you can never earn a gift, you know, you right. can't earn forgiveness. Forgiveness is the prerogative of the one that's been offended right. to, to give, right. you know, the one that's been hurt to give. And, and so we have offended God because we've destroyed in some way, our sin always destroys ourselves and, and his creation. And so it's his prerogative to forgive, and he freely gives that to us. And so the good news of this is that everything that's been, everything that needed to be done in order for us to be forgiven and brought back to God, right, to cover our sin, to atone for our sin and, and to make us one with God again, has been done by God, that's right. the Son, on the cross. <laughs> and so yeah. if, if you feel like you are the only one in the world that has sinned so much that God can't forgive you, you are just frankly wrong. And, <laughs> and you're calling God a liar. And you're saying that what he did on the cross is nothing. Look, you, your sin is not bigger than the, the hell that God went through on the cross to forgive you. It's simply not. So like, yeah. get over yourself and receive the forgiveness of God. It's a free gift. Give the give it to him. Give it to him. And and if you're having issues with that, right, we have a great um, way to deal with that, which is um, the confessional, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. And the um, when it when it comes to um, you know pr private confession in in our own tradition, um, historically it was this is this is what you do when you just can't. Um, deal with it when you just can't get over it when you're when you can't get the peace from from the gospel you go to someone else so they can kind of you know you go to your priest who will help you understand that peace that's already there because the problem right. isn't that god's not giving you forgiveness the problem is that you're not accepting it 
Yeah, it's bouncing you know? off of our hard heads. And I, I, yeah. I, I am a, I'm speaking to myself here, you know, because I think I suffer yeah. sometimes from scrup that scrupulosity that you're talking about. And yeah. so I need, I go to confession regularly because I find that unless I can give that, I can verbalize it before the priest and hear those words of absolution, Satan will take those, take the, take those things I do and and beat me over the head in it, yeah. and and he'll and he does it in order to silence me right from from the from preaching and teaching the full counsel of god um yeah he's trying to sideline he's trying to sideline um what the lord is doing in my life and and that's what he's doing um with you if if you are um battling um you know with guilt and shame um over sin and and don't um and haven't received you know the forgiveness of christ and, and uh, you know, speaking of um, you know the the atonement that comes on the cross and what that means, uh, you know, from, from the uh, Anglican Standard Text in, in the Holy Communion, you know, He made there by His one oblation of Himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. Mm. Um, and, that, and that's very careful language on the part of I mean, that's adapted from uh, Archbishop Cranmer's originals. Um, yeah, I mean, all, all the all these things together, the you know, the 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 offering that is the oblation, um, it's full, it's perfect, it's mm. sufficient, it mm. takes care of it. There's nothing else that's needed. Um, it's sa it satisfies yes. um, the, the 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 requirements of the one offended. It's been taken care of. Mm. What, how beautiful is that? And that and that liberates us. And this is one of the rediscoveries of the Reformation that is so precious right it's so valuable that that the the christian life is not one that i mean you, god didn't create us to be obeying him out of guilt and shame that's right okay i mean uh, doing the right thing out of guilt and shame is better than not doing the right thing but that's not what god created us to do like he wants us to to live out of a freedom um he wants us to be motivated by love in doing the right thing and a desire for the good of, of of others a true desire that that arises and and this this truth of forgiveness allows us to do that right because we understand now that we've been forgiven that we've been released and there's all of this um thankfulness that that rises up and a whole new perspective on on life we can have because of of forgiveness uh, it's it's romans 12 1 right mm -hmm. that's that's what the eucharistic prayer but Kramer put that first paragraph in there. Uh, I believe what he's doing is he's um, he's having it model what Paul says in Romans 12, 1. He says, in view of the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and That's acceptable right. to God, which is your uh, reasonable act or your spiritual act of worship. So it's it's the mercies of God that open up this new way. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. Um, you know, God, God is not, um, he's not, he's not a manipulative narcissist gaslighting us. No, you know, he's, no. he's setting us free. He's yeah. setting us free. He's setting us free, man. Freedom, freedom is not um, just doing what you want, right? <laughs> freedom is living into the purpose in which you were created. That's right. And, and that's better to know that purpose than the one who created us. Yes, he knows it, and it's good for us, and and he's he shows us the path of blessing. So, amen. Let us follow amen. him. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Anglican Catechesis, where we're learning to follow Jesus on the Anglican way. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, and leave a comment below. You can also take Anglican Catechesis with you on the go by subscribing to the podcast. You can find the link in the YouTube description. Lord willing, we look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit.